Hi, I'm Jonathan Pinckney, a program officer at the U.S. Institute of Peace. Uh, here at USIP, we're assessing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on various aspects of conflict around the world. And one of the important aspects of the pandemic and the restrictions because, uh, because of the pandemic uh, are on nonviolent action and popular movements. How can people continue to advance their demands and push for positive change when they need to stay socially distant and those social, social distancing restrictions prevent them from gathering in big numbers in the streets? I wrote about that with Miranda Rivers uh, on the USIP website, uh, and, but I wanna talk more about it here based on some questions from social media. So the first big question uh, from Paul Nolan is whether nonviolent action just has to completely grind to a halt uh, because of coronavirus. And the short answer is no. While gathering people in public protests is something that is much more difficult uh, to do at this point in time, much less advisable, there are literally hundreds of other potential tactics that movements can use in times when gathering large numbers of people in the streets for public demonstrations isn't feasible. To conflate public protests with nonviolent action is a key mistake. People can engage in boycotts, strikes, and many, many other kinds of tactics. There's currently a, a data gathering effort uh, by the Crowd Counting Consortium led by Dr. Erica Chen with at Harvard University that has already cataloged over a hundred different tactics uh, that movement has have used since the outbreak of COVID-19, and that's just the starting point. Uh, pl in places like Brazil, uh, people have banged pots and pans together while standing uh, in the windows of their homes in order to express dissent. And more and more actions like this are taking place every day. In some cases, the virus is actually increasing public dissent uh, as people are disillusioned with uh, or angry because of government's uh, bungled uh, or weak responses to the virus. And of course, one major thing that many movements are doing is shifting their activism online. And this is our second question uh, from the C Center. Are we seeing an increase in online forms of activism in response uh, to movement restrictions uh, and uh, social distancing requirements? And again, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, this has been a major aspect of many movements activities for quite some time. Uh, but in this era of social distancing, many movements are making it a much more central part of their activities. And we're seeing huge instances of online protests, larger than anything uh, that we've seen in the past. For instance, in Israel, an opposition movement there gathered over a half a million people uh, for a single online protest rally. Now, this comes with some unique challenges. In particular, uh, scholars have identified over some time an increasing trend of what they call digital authoritarianism, where repressive governments are using uh, digital tools in order to restrict civic space. So as movements shift to these online spaces, they're going to face some unique challenges. Uh, and that'll be an important thing to keep an eye on going forward. And finally, uh, Ben Neymar Rouse has asked if there are any common efforts between political scientists and people from public health uh, or biology or other, uh, or other physical sciences to come up with interdisciplinary recommendations for responding to COVID-19. Uh, I'm not aware of any efforts like this. I would love to know more about that. Uh, but this highlights the importance of bringing into account the social and political dynamics uh, of this pandemic. Obviously, the pandemic's primary impact is as a public health crisis. But beyond that, the ripple effects of COVID-19 are going through every aspect uh, of our political systems and societies. And so it's absolutely crucial uh, for those secondary and tertiary effects to be an important part of the conversation of how we respond uh, to COVID-19. So thanks to everyone uh, for those great questions. Uh, keep the conversation going on social media uh, with the hashtag COVID and conflict and visit our website, usip.org, for more resources. Thank you.